Yo, 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 yo! Peace. Namaste. Let me tag some people. If I can. see here if I can tag a whole bunch of people <laughs> oh, man. I'm back in my truck my pulpit my office I just I just knocked out two roof repairs and they each took me about 15 or 20 minutes and uh, I just about made a week's paycheck. <laughs> They're my uh, roofing minimums because I'm just not going to get on a roof for less than a certain amount because these roofs were actually were actually uh, steep. My legs are even tired because they were so steep, and I got a special pair of boots that allow me to walk on the steepest of roofs. Those are called cougar paws. And they are well worth the money, I can tell you that. So we're on part two. Part two of encountering your true self in different ways. And I'm not saying these are the only ways but these are some ways that I have experienced and I may even add to the list because there are more. And yesterday we talked about uh, deep thought and contemplation. And if you pay attention, all of these tie in together. These are all ways that we operate this advanced God technology that we are. And, and these are all encountering your true self is to encounter God. It's to encounter source. It's to encounter the universe. It's to encounter the energy that stands behind and fills and holds all things together. The Christ, conscious life, energy, pure energy, pure love. Albert Einstein, I think it was Albert Einstein. Yeah, he wrote letters to his daughter. And in the letters, he, he um, recently, you know, these letters have come out probably, or maybe I just saw them. But in, in this one particular letter, he told her to hold the letters because the world was not ready for what he had. Hello, everybody. Good to see you here. Good to see you here. And in this particular letter, he said that, you know, he, Albert Einstein said mass or matter is, um, no, energy is mass times the speed of light squared. E equals M. Uh, times the speed of light squared. So mass or matter is energy. In quantum physics, you know, they say if we magnify anything large enough, and I've said this a whole bunch of times, but we got to get this. If we magnify anything large enough, if we blow it up, we'll get past the material field and we'll get down to the subatomic field. We'll get down to the subatomic particles that are popping in and out of invisibility at a rate slowed down to visibility. Light, the light bends when it hits water and it actually slows down to visibility form. And these subatomic particles fill everything and they're popping in and out of invisibility at 20,000 times per nanosecond. So you would, some people say, um, at a rate so fast, but we're, it's slowed down. It's, it's not popping in and out of visibility, it's popping in and out of invisibility. And then over there in Hebrews, it actually says that, you know, faith, which is hypostasis, is the substance that underlies, underlies all things seen. And because of this faith, um, we know that the worlds were framed up by the rhema word which is sound, vibration. 
So there's a substance. So to, so to walk by faith is to walk with the understanding that everything is energy. <laughs> that we're one. We're all tied together. It's the single eye. It's the narrow way. It's the pure heart. And now we each have unique reasons we're here, I believe. So every part of the body, like my finger has a unique purpose. It's still one as me, but but it's my finger. It's got a very unique purpose. I couldn't pull the trigger on a on a on a rifle or a pistol, you know, without my fingers, you know, one of them. So in, in every organ and then every group of cells, they all have particular um, jobs and purposes. But what we found out is most of us are walking around unaware of our true purpose and meaning. So like Dr. Will Rogers says, we we need clarity of image. And what is that image? It's the unique expression of source that I am. So what's the unique expression of source that you are? Not as an individual I unto yourself. At one time we thought we were an individual I unto ourselves. We thought we were just flesh. We thought we were just um, mortal. We thought we were separate and enemies of source, God. At one time in our own minds now we thought we thought we were just a visible being. We thought we were just physical. We thought, you know, everything was external. We thought because we were taught who we were supposed to be and what we were supposed to do. We were, we were taught by the external world, by the world system, the world structure, by our parents, by our environment, by the things we watched. We were taught and programmed who we were supposed to be. But who you thought yourself to be is not who you be. Who you thought yourself to be is not who you be. So this is why we're talking about encountering your true self. Encountering the true self. The I within the I. Good, good, good morning everyone that's, that's on here. Sherry, Cyrus, Jennifer, Daniel, what's up, brother? Bunch of people on here. Good to see you. Anthony, good to see you. Tender, tender inner heart, good to see you. Robert, good to see you. Love you all. So yesterday we talked about deep thought and contemplation. And we talked about some ways reading inspirational writings, poems, whatever. I have a book of poems by, uh, what's his name? It's like Gibral a good Gibraltar or something. Man, I forget his name. I, I meant to bring the book so I could show you. But they're very inspiring. We can You can watch certain things that are very inspiring. I can look at that tree and contemplate, deeply think about the tree. How is that tree, is, is that tree alive? Does that tree speak? Am I one with that tree? Can I go into that tree and be the tree, feel the tree? The tree came from the seed, but how did the seed come forth? Everything that that tree was, was within that seed. I can get into these deep thoughts and contemplations and become entangled with the tree, with creation, quantum entanglement. And through that deep thought, there'll be questions that arise. There'll be questions within me that arise. Now here's the thing about the questions, and, and when you're listening to me and I say certain things, um, they may stretch some people. I was told that that um, I was being used to provoke thought. So there there are some things that are that that are really far out there. I know, and there's some things that maybe some people have not heard, and there's some things that I say that I hear, and I say because I know my father's voice so in such a way I hear it so clearly that when I hear I speak and I do and I see and I do you know Jesus said I only do what I see my father doing <laughs> I only say what I hear my father saying you know and where is that voice coming from where are these questions coming from God asked Adam and, and Eve who told you you were naked why where'd that question come from it didn't come from out here 
Whose voice are you hearing when the questions come? So when I when I speak and talk about a lot of things and, and start to flow in, in the revelatory realm and things that have been revealed to me, I'm sharing with you this is a great way to stay in a stream of revelation. And when I mean revelation, the truth is being revealed. And the truth about what? You. <laughs> it's the truth that sets you free. It is the truth in, that brings clarity to your true image the being that you are the specific purpose that you are here at this time right now that you were handpicked and chosen I heard uh, quite some time ago some years ago I was I was contemplating I was meditating I was th I was thinking very deeply and these questions were bubbling up within me what did you do to those fishermen this is the questions I was asking what did you do to those guys that they walked in such power like that? What did you do? I mean, and I was really meditating on like uh, the miracles that were being performed like by Paul and, and all the, the, the revelation and, and by Peter and, and Jesus and all this stuff. I was really, and, and I heard within me uh, these questions I was meditating on, contemplating deep thought. I heard within me, Alec, I saved the best for last. <laughs> You're the best. <laughs> that was saved for last. <laughs> and here's the deal. It's not like anyone, um, you are the first and the last, the alpha and the omega. You hear, hear what I'm saying here? It's one body that has been evolving and moving as one. This is why the saints of old and the cloud of witnesses, they're all uh, waiting on us for the fullness, you know, to come because we're all connected. This body of God that has been evolving and reincarnating itself over and over and over again. First Adam, last Adam. See, see, it's, it's, it's not like, okay, we've been here before because we've always been one. We've always been. So, uh, you know, I heard you, I said the best for last, but these questions, so as I speak, questions may bubble up from within you. Questions. Capture the questions. You may drift off into a daydream, a trance, and you may get shown something, or you may get presented a question. You may see something that you question. Capture what you're seeing and capture the question. Um, you, may, you may hear a thought. You may see and hear uh, an inspirational writing that you've read, scripture, whatever. Get into the, the uh, all these ancient scriptures. Read them. Look at them. Look, look at all the, the wisdom and look at all the inspired writings that are out there today and of past. Get entangled with that. The questions will bubble up. As I'm speaking, the questions will bubble up. You may, you may have a vision. You may hear a voice. You may go somewhere in your imagination. Capture it. Capture it. Because here's what's going on. These questions are an invitation from your true self, the Christ, conscious life energy, the superconscious, the mind of God, the nine mind. These questions are an invitation into a very intimate conversation where the truth of you will be revealed and ultimately where you will encounter God. You will encounter source. You will encounter your true self. You will encounter love. You will encounter the true image. And when you see him as he truly is or her, you will see that you have always been as he or her truly is. You will see, you will know as you have always been known. You will know the knowledge of God. You will see the fullness of Christ that you are. Uh, a little while back I was in the shower and uh, I was listening to Justin Paul Abraham actually, and uh, and he was he had a group before him, and he was talking about ascending. Back back then, 
I, I was thinking I'm actually going somewhere. I'm actually leaving, you know, my body and I'm going somewhere. I no longer think that. You know, King David said, if I send the heavens, you're there. Or if I choose to make my bed in the hell of <clears throat> mortality, you are there. Who's there? King David was alive when he was sent, when, when this was scribed and written. Where was he going? Ascension, essentially, is awakening. You're ascending within into the heavenly thought and idea, into the one mind that you are, into the super consciousness that you are. So, so uh, in this particular day, I was in the shower and I was listening to him and he said, now, okay, we're all going to ascend at the same time. And, and then he said, when I say ascend, we're all going to ascend at the same time. And he said, ascend. And as soon as he said ascend, I went somewhere. And I saw I was I was on the I was behind and I was up and I was looking down into a vision, into a picture. And I saw this being and I saw this being that was a um, translucent illuminated being that was a indigo blue, a bluish color. And, and it was me and I knew it was me and I had my arms out wide and I saw myself from behind and I was standing before this council of what, what I knew was a council of gods, so to speak. And there were ancient looking men, there were, you know, there were regular looking men, there were really old looking men and they were really young and there were these angelic looking beings. There were just these different beings there and they were all looking at me and and they were in awe it's like they were just mesmerized and they were like looking this perfect perfection this perfect light being that I am they were just they were looking at me I was standing before the council of gods in which we are I'm standing in I'm sitting in amongst the council of gods right now you all of us and so and and so what came out of that though were all these questions. Is that me? Is that who I truly am? One morning I woke up and through very just miraculous way, I got told through my phone that Uriel belongs to me, to Alexander. God's flame belongs to Alexander. This was back in 2015, I think. And I still contemplate and have questions about that and more is being revealed. So these questions are, are an invitation for you to encounter your true self. So capture the questions. Stay your mind on the questions. Think about the questions. Who God's flame? What is God's flame? How can God's flame belong to me? Who is Uriel? Am I who? Is, what is Uriel? What's the message? This is an art. And then I learned it was a, a, an arch, archangel. And then I, I later learned, well, well, I was raised by angels. And, and then I later learned that all these angels have always been within me. And then I later learned that it is me. And then I later learned the message of the angel is in the angel's name. And it's very simple, but it's U-R-I-E-L. You are God. The I and the L are one. Same thing Jesus said. I and Father are one. We are. We are one. A very unique expression of the one. So through these questions and the art of questions, it is good to ask questions. It is good to hear the questions. So as the questions bubble up, capture the questions and stay your mind on the questions because more will, will be revealed. God asked uh, a question to, I believe it was, was Cain, but he said, if you do the right thing, won't you be accepted? But if you don't do the right thing, Sin will be waiting at the door ready to strike. It will entice you, but you must rule over it. Sin here is this word, I believe, uh, C-H-A-T-A-H, chata, chata, whatever. And it means to miss the mark. So what's standing at the door and what is the door? 
It is who you thought yourself to be. It's, it's the one that misses the mark, but you cannot miss the mark because you are the mark. You are the archer, you are the bow, you are the arrow, and you are the bullseye. You're all of it. You cannot miss the mark, but the image, who you thought yourself to be, flesh, just, just a, a mortal, an external being, um, that thought, who you were taught you were, I was told I was just wild coming up, and I believed it. So what was I? What did I do? I, I was wild as all get out. I went wild. <laughs> I believed what I was taught from the external world. I believed what I was taught by my teachers and my coaches and all this. But you must be taught, be still and know that I am God. You must turn within and encounter your true self. Know thyself. Know thy true self. Know the I that's within the I. You are not an individual I. You are not an individual unto yourself. Your unique individualism is God is sources uniqueness as an individual. You are God visible. You are the visible image of the invisible God. <laughs> so these questions... One more thing about these questions. Learn to contemplate, like we talked about yesterday, to think deeply on the questions. Why would God ask Cain a question like that? And where, where did the question come from? And whose voice did Cain hear? Who do you hear when the questions come to you? <clears throat> I believe you hear yourself. And what are the questions there for? To help you awaken to your true self. And, and what happens when I actually have a check in my spirit? What happens when, when, when I, I get offended? When somebody says something that provokes offense in me? What happens when the adversity comes? The wall goes up and, I, and the offense is there. Well, I've learned that the adversary, the adversity, is my wisest teacher. And that the, there is a question underlying the offense. There's a question in that check in my spirit. And here it is. Who should I make that check out to? <laughs> you can make it out to me. <laughs> Oh, for real though. In the offense, in the stretching, there's a question there because your understanding is being stretched. In the in the in the adversity, in the accusation, in the adversary, the adverse thought, there's a question there that that will be answered. Find the question. We are learning. And the adversity is our wisest teacher. The pressure is positive. It's our wisest teacher. Because it, when you flip the adversity, when you flip the adversity, I, I'll give you a good example. All throughout my life, prior, I didn't finish things. I was good at everything I did, but, but, but I would self-destruct them before I had the opportunity to fail. So there was a thought that the adversary was telling me I would fail. The adversary was telling me I wasn't a finisher. I just started things and, 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 and then I would self-destruct them. But the truth lied behind the illusion. What's the truth? I'm a finisher. I start things and I finish them. And I, and I immensely act on them, and I make decisions, and I'm a shot caller, and I'm a leader, and I am a uh, great communicator. I had a fear of speaking. I was told that, that I couldn't speak. I, 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 it was so bad that I could not even talk. Words wouldn't even come out when I got in front of people. Why? 
lying behind that illusion, that false image that crouched at the door, that now I rule over, that's under my feet, because it was my wisest teacher. That fear was telling me who I truly was, a powerful speaker and communicator who can break down systems and, and who can break down anything, scriptures, process. I can break down marketing strategies. I can break down companies. I can break down this advanced technology that we are and give you simple step-by-step -step processes that you can put into action to help bring wholeness to, the, to, to this body, humanity. So the offense, when you feel stretched, there is a question there. Ask yourself, why am I being offended? Is what he's saying really true? What did he say? God as me? I'm the visible image of God? I'm perfect? I'm a light body? I'm illuminated? What? How can I be that? See these questions. They're an invitation from your true self. They're an invitation from source. They're an invitation from the super consciousness. They're an invitation into a most holy, intimate conversation where, where you will gain revelation and where you will encounter your true self. So that's it for today. That's kind of the art of, of questions and questioning. Encourage questions in your children. Encourage the questions. Encourage them. Love the questions. Question everything. Listen to the questions you're being asked. Capture them. Contemplate on them. And you're going to get your own custom-made revelation. Reveal, revealing the truth of what? The truth of you truth of all of humanity, but specifically the truth of your unique purpose and expression that you are. So peace. I hope that helped you. Um, we'll take a break over the weekend and get back on it on Monday. I'm trying to, I, I'm trying to iron out a good time for me to come on. If anybody you know has any ideas there with me, I'm, I'm I want to get more, uh, What's the word I'm looking for? Where I'm consistent. <laughs> I, I, you know, I, I flow like the wind, man, in, in my work, but I really want to get more consistent with the time. And, uh, and when I come on here, mornings are good. When I have my kids, it's a little tough. Uh, maybe after I dropped them off. I'm going to iron a timeout when I come on. But next, uh, next week on Monday... We're going to go, we're going to dig a little deeper into um, fantastic imagination and feeling and how to evoke those feelings to bring forth what you're seeing and how to tap into the vision and how to receive visions through your imagination and all this cool stuff, how to heal, how, how to heal the sick how, through, through fantastic imagination, how to get what you truly want. And then on Tuesday, we'll go over breath work and, 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 um, and how we can use that. And, and then uh, we'll go over meditation and prayer the next day, then daydreaming, uh, trances. And then we'll go over um, fantasizing or tapping into your heart's desire and how to stay your mind. Because when you stay your mind, when you stay your mind and you stay the feeling. You're, you're living in the end. You are, you are setting your vibration. You're setting the sound. And it's that vibration and sound. You're setting the electromagnetic signal. And that's what the kingdom that you placed yourself in, that God placed you in as a king and a queen, that's what the kingdom responds to. That's, what, that's the language of the kingdom. That's what these vibrational patterns respond to. Let your thoughts be my thought, and your ways will be my way. And you'll be led forth in, in peace. Let the peace of God rule your heart. And you'll, and you'll go forth in fullness of joy. 
in the mountains and the hills, the vibrational patterns will break forth in song before you, and the trees will bend over and clap their hands. Harmony, synchronicity, alignment, agreement, power, dominion. Peace. Love you all. Have a have a amazing day today. Be grateful. Whoo, for life. I got breath. Be grateful. Be grateful for everything. Encourage someone today. Love you all.